Well, we have more news from the fallout from Hurricane Ian. Dozens of people are dead in the aftermath of Hurricane Ian, mostly people who were drowned. You would assume these are disproportionately elderly citizens who either couldn't leave the house or didn't leave the house and then were unable to escape when the floodwaters rose. According to the Washington Post, Florida residents are grappling with widespread destruction and flooding after Hurricane Ian, one of the most powerful storms to ever hit the United States, amid ongoing search efforts and a death toll that has risen to at least 62. Across the most affected parts of the state, local and federal rescue crews continue to scour neighborhoods for survivors. We're not in recovery phase, said Chase Fabrizio, the leader of Maryland Task Force One, a search and rescue crew of FEMA. We are still in the search. Across the southwest and central regions of the state, about 800,000 homes and businesses remain without power on Sunday afternoon, according to poweroutage.us. In North Carolina, there were still 16,000 customers without power. By the way, that 800,000 homes and businesses remaining without power, that is down from well north of 2 million in the immediate aftermath of the hurricane. Meanwhile, several bridges were destroyed, complicating rescue efforts. The causeway to Sanibel Island, a 12-mile bar barrier island, was rendered impassable, cutting off the island from the mainland. President Biden and First Lady Jill Biden are planning to travel to Puerto Rico on Monday and Florida on Wednesday to survey the hurricane damage. Again, this is one of my least favorite things in American politics is when people from the White House feel the necessity to jet set to disaster areas to gaze out across the wreckage and be like, ah, well, now that I'm here, I guess everything is okay. Again, I hated it when, when it was Bush. I didn't like it with Obama. I didn't like it with Trump. It's just a consistent bugaboo of my own. I really don't like it when we act as though the president has godlike powers to quell the rising waters. That's not the way any of this works. According to the Florida Medical Examiner's Commission, they said the hurricane had caused at least 58 deaths in the state, most of them from drowning. That tally did not include Charlotte County, where local officials have also confirmed multiple deaths. As I said, many of the victims were older than age 60. Body bodies were found inside flooded cars, floating in water, and on the beach. There were four storm-related deaths in North Carolina as well. Now, naturally, because this is the United States, everything turns political pretty quickly. Ron DeSantis, by all available metrics, has been doing a pretty good job of handling all of this. He announced that all the ports in Florida would be open by Saturday. The ports, Tampa Bay, Miami, Everglades, uh, they are reopened for fueling. Uh, and I think between today and tomorrow, all the ports in the state of Florida, uh, up and down the both coasts, will be uh, operational. Many in the media are looking for an excuse to blame DeSantis for something. So the thing that they have come up with so far is that DeSantis defending his Lee County late evacuation, or by late evacuation, or we mean it was still 21 hours before the Cat 4 Superstorm made landfall on North Captiva Island. And again, that was a mandatory evacuation order that only went out 21 hours beforehand, specifically because the storm took a really, really late turn. It was expected, of course, to move north into the panhandle, and then it took this very late breaking turn. Again, that's still almost a day to get out if you need to get out. So the fact that a lot of people didn't leave, a lot of people were told to leave and they didn't. Some local officials said the county was lulled into a sense of false complacency in the lead up to the cataclysmic event. The barrier islands first hit by Ian were all part of the projected models of the storm path 72 hours after it slammed it, before it slammed into the United States. But Fort Myers was not. And Fort Myers is, of course, the place where he did not say mandatory evacuation until about 21 hours before. So again, following the map meant that DeSantis did what he did, but they're going to try to pretend now that somehow this was an act of incompetence and that if he had if he had just come out and said everybody in Florida, I guess, should have evacuated the state, that would have fixed it. This is a dog that won't hunt. People knew if they were in the storm path, they had to get out of the way. Again, if you have a full day to get out of the way of a Cat 4 and you don't get out of the way of a Cat 4, generally that is by choice. There's not a lot of information that people 20 hours beforehand were basically stuck in traffic trying to get out of that particular area. If we find out differently, obviously, then maybe the math changes a little bit, but that is not what we know thus far. The other area where the media are jumping all over DeSantis is that DeSantis talked about the fact that in the aftermath of, for example, Hurricane Katrina, you saw widespread looting. You saw people who were stealing things. You saw a lot of criminality. He said while he was uh, while he was touring the state, do not think about looting. You should remember that this is a Second Amendment state. If you try to loot things, you may get shot. We want to main, make sure we're maintaining law and order. Uh, don't even think about looting. Don't even think about taking advantage of people in this vulnerable uh, situation. And so local law enforcement is involved in, 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 in monitoring that. You know, I told Kevin if the state needs to help as well, uh, because you, know, you can have people, you know, bringing boats into some of these islands and trying to ransack people's homes. Um, I can tell you in the state of Florida, uh, you never know what may be lurking behind somebody's home. And I would not want to chance that if I were you, given that we're a Second Amendment state. Now, Florida Attorney General Ashley Moody seconded that. She said looting is not going to be tolerated in the state of Florida, which obviously differentiates it from the place where I came uh, from, uh, California, where looting was tolerated in widespread fashion without a natural disaster just because, hell, why not? Anyway, here was the Florida AG. In no way, shape, or form do we want Floridians to feel when we ask them to evacuate that they can't do so and leave their property 
securely. And yes, we have seen instances of folks going into homes trying to burglarize, burglarize them, and we don't want that to be any reason for folks to be hesitant to leave in the future or even now. So uh, we've issued those strong warnings, and certainly Florida uh, Governor DeSantis has been, been strong and made sure that everyone knows Florida is a law and order state, and that will not be tolerated. Now, this is a completely racially neutral standard. Don't loot things and you won't get shot. This seems pretty obvious, except to the folks over at MSNBC. Joy Reid tweeted out, when the looting sh starts, the shooting starts. Segregationist Miami Sheriff Walter Headley, 1967, didn't take DeSantis long to return to form. Ah, he's a segregationist now. So when he says that you shouldn't loot in the middle of a hurricane aftermath recovery and that there are a lot of people in Florida who own guns, that's obviously a form of segregation. By the way, you talk about the low bigotry, the soft bigotry of low expectations. Um, that's pretty hard bigotry right there, because apparently Joy Reid is now assuming that everybody who would be looting in the state of Florida is black, which is why Ron DeSantis would be saying that. An insane proposition, given the fact a lot of not black people live in Florida and presumably many criminals who are not black live in Florida and would be engaging in looting if that were to happen. So well done there from Joy Reid. Again, this is a dog that's not going to hunt so far. There's a struggle to come up with some sort of narrative as to how DeSantis is blowing this, because what Democrats are really afraid of is that DeSantis will respond to this in actually mature, responsible fashion. And if that happens, it boosts his chances at 2024 even more. Meanwhile, Kamala Harris continuing to do what she does worst, which is be vice president. So the vice president of the United States actually said out loud that hurricane and disaster relief should be allotted and allocated based on race, which is crazy. I mean, you should actually give people who need the money and the resources, the money and resources they need, not based on their skin color, but again, because this entire administration has been pervaded by equity considerations. This is how you end up with Kamala Harris saying this sort of nonsense. It is our um, lowest income communities and our communities of color that are most impacted by these extreme conditions and, and impacted by, by issues that are not of their own making. And oh, so women. we... Absolutely. And so we have to address this in a way that is about giving resources based on equity, understanding that we, we fight for equality, but we also need to fight for equity, understanding not everyone starts out at the same place. And if we want people to be in an equal place, sometimes we have to take into account those disparities. The smarm is so strong with this one. So just to get this straight, we're not going to pay attention to which communities need it most. We're going to pay attention to which communities are apparently most stacked with people of color in the name of equity, according to Kamala Harris. This, of course, prompted the state of Florida to be like, no, that's not the way <laughs> this is working. That would actually be illegal, right? You can't actually do that under federal or state law that is discriminatory. The fact that the vice president of the United States keeps saying stuff like this is, once again, demonstrative of a worldview that is incredibly perverse. The idea being, again, the old New York Times headline, world to end tomorrow, women and minorities hit hardest. Now it's hurricane hits, women and minorities hit hardest, even if we have, by the way, we have no evidence that that's the case. Many of the areas that were absolutely destroyed here, like Sanibel Island, that is a very wealthy area. I mean, you're talking about some of the wealthiest areas of Florida, even like vacation islands with a lot of white people who are very, very rich. And uh, apparently those people don't get any aid because what, equity or something? Meanwhile, in another ironic headline, according to the Daily Wire, a Coast Guard hero who was praised by Joe Biden for saving lives after Hurricane Ian is now facing discharge because he didn't get the COVID jab. Apparently, aviation survival technician second class Zach Loesch earned praise on a Friday phone call from the commander-in-chief for kicking in a wall to save a trapped wheelchair-bound woman and her husband. The guardsman hoisted the woman in her wheelchair to a waiting helicopter, according to Breitbart, which interviewed him. Biden said in a press release, I told him how proud I was of him and thanked him for all the hard work he and his coasties are doing to save lives. And uh, he personally thanked Loesch and Lieutenant Commander Christopher Hooper for the heroic work they and their Coast Guard colleagues have performed during search and rescue operations in response to Hurricane Ian. Apparently, Biden said that Hooper's team also saved a one-month-old baby. It was not clear where the rescues occurred. There's only one problem, according to the Daily Wire. The next time Loesch hears from a federal official, it could be to learn that his career is over because he told Breitbart that he had applied for religious exemption to avoid taking the COVID vax, but doesn't expect to have it honored. He said, if I'd asked any of the people I saved yesterday if they wanted to come with me, even though I'm unvaxxed, every single one of them would have said yes, he said. And all of this is madness. And again, demonstrative of the silliness of this administration, which has very screwed up priorities, shall we say. So, guys, the rest of the show is continuing now, including Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez writing letters to a bunch of rabbis about how she should be able to dictate their views on gay rights. Plus, the Supreme Court is coming back into session. They have a bunch of big decisions on the docket. If you're not a member, click the link in the description and join us.